Hey, Tom Stanton with TimberTrails.tv, and we're going to talk about window installation because we've had somebody who asked about it, said she was a little bit scared about doing it, looking for some insights. So here's a little bit of insight about doing windows. It's pretty simple. With the SIP panels, we've cut our rough opening into the SIP panel to match what the manufacturer has cited for the windows. So it's approximately a quarter inch off on either side from the actual window dimension, and that gives you a little bit of wiggle room if things aren't exactly right. As far as the uh, house goes from there, the structure comes with the SIP panel with the rough opening cut into it. You wrap the house with the house wrap, and then you cut with an X or Y pattern into the house wrap itself, peel it back, tape it on the back corners, and leave the top flap up just a little bit so that you can actually slip the window in and leave that to provide for a rain shed on the top of it. The idea is to create, as a good friend of mine named John, John Rayfield, thank you for this, fish scales that water would shed off of and in a continual pattern from the top on down through the rest of the house. So, A number one, you want to make sure that your trailer is level and plumb in all dimensions, which we did in the course of about an hour getting this trailer reset. And so we can look at it with big level like my grandfather's here and see that it's level on this plane and on the other end of the house we can look at it and make sure that it's level this way. What that does is gives you something that you can create as essentially a standard which limits the variables for how the window is going to be placed. If this wall is flat and therefore plumb, installing the window with the uh, manufactured J channel means that it's going to seat properly in the window. So house wrap goes on, it's cut, it's peeled back and taped on the back wall. You want to put the window in and then make a small mark on the corners when you get the window leveled into the rough opening and make some marks on the corner so that you've got an idea of how the window is going to go in. Once the window is placed there, I like to put a screw in the corner of something that I'm trying to get right so that I can then tilt the other opposite corner just a little bit to get the variations down and as perfect as possible. So with a quick check of the level and a screw on the opposite corner, the window is held in. You've got nothing to worry about. Now certainly you want to tape it before that. You want to put a little bit of a of um, sealer behind that as well, a nice latex or something that's going to be both waterproof as well as in a tiny house, uh, able to move around as the house is basically going to be rattling down the road, an occasional uh, rough driveway like my own, or um, other conditions like that that may apply. So that's it in kind of a 101 sense from the application of siding. Seth did a lot of research and we ultimately found that putting the lath strips onto the outside of the house before installing the siding is going to continue to help. As another friend of mine likes to say, the house doesn't want to breathe, it needs to dry, and this is going to create air channels that allows for the front of the, uh, the siding to shed water. Should any moisture get behind it, then it's got essentially a vent stack for the air to be able to channel its way back out and dry the OSB and dry the back side of the siding as well as the last strips. And uh, a dry house is a happy house, at least one that's going to last a long time. So. There's a little 101 on Windows. I'll post some top 10 tips as well along with this post and look forward to uh, any other questions or comments. So thanks again for all the follows and questions and comments.